it's lovely to be here with you. Now, I just wanted to start by telling you a story. So if we could have the first slide up, that would be fantastic. Thank you so much. The house was run down, fences broken, rubbish everywhere. An old seat outside the house, which was destroyed. As we entered the room, I saw two beds, but didn't realize there was someone under the covers of one of the beds. He never came out. In the other bed were two brothers, about age 10 and 12, an older sister, about 15. And then I saw the most sparkly eyes peek out behind the cover and a beautiful little girl of about three appeared. There was rubbish all over the floor. The floor was covered in half-eaten bits of food. It was dirty. There was no proper heating or cooking facilities. And this family of six had to survive in this run-down, dirty, small room. I was in Romania and I immediately saw the difference that our supporters make in the lives of people like this family as myself and two supporters from the southeast <coughs> had the privilege of distributing shoeboxes. The two boys immediately tore open the boxes and reveled at all of the contents, immediately putting on the warm woolen hats, drawing and writing with the pens, eating the sweets. It was clear that each shoebox provided not only practical items that they needed, but also reminded them that they were special and that they were loved. With shoeboxes being opened, goods being tried on, and the noise level increasing with all the excitement, myself and the two supporters turned our focus to the bright-eyed little girl who went through her box with such care and attention, taking out each item and delighting in the presence that someone who didn't even know her had picked out for her and wanted her to have at Christmas. I will never forget visiting that family, which helped me understand more fully the extreme poverty that some people have to endure. As humans, as citizens, especially as Christians, we have a duty, don't we, to look after the poor, to help those who are in need and point them to a God who loves them completely. So my name is Susie Shears and I work for Blytheswood Care as the area fundraising manager for the southeast of England. Now I love this part of my job where I can come out and meet with supporters especially now coming face to face it's so nice i don't have to look at people in a little box on the screen <laughs> on zoom now i met sam from your church uh, in 2019 who came and dropped off your filled shoe boxes uh, to donate to our 2019 shoe box appeal so thank you so so much to all of you who filled boxes for our appeal now, despite the incredibly difficult year we had last year, we managed to send out over 75,000 shoeboxes to people in need, which is just incredible in the kind of year that we had last year with shops being closed and people not being able to access things in the same way. That is just an incredible amount. Now, um, if we can go on to the next slide, I think that should be, so the third one, the next one, that's it, brilliant. Now, this little guy, you can see him over here on the banner as well. He's gorgeous, isn't he? His name is Ismedin, and Ismedin is four, and he's from Kosovo. And he was one of the first people to receive a shoebox in our 2020 appeal. Somebody said to me recently, that shoebox is massive. <laughs> it is quite big, isn't it? He's quite small, so that it's all relative. Um, but we weren't too fussy in the size of boxes we got last year. Any boxes we got were an absolute, um, were just brilliant. So let me tell you a little bit about Ismedin. Ismedin lives with 11 members of his extended family in one room. <laughs> I mean, that's just incredible, isn't it? 
And we've had it difficult with the pandemic, but if you can imagine, somebody like Ismedin has had it even more difficult. Um, now, let's just move on to our next slide. Brilliant, thank you. Now, just to give you a little bit of background, just for those who don't know about Blytheswood, Blytheswood Care was started by a minister called Jackie Ross 55 years ago. Now, I haven't been working for them all that time. Um, he was studying to become a minister and with the help of some friends, started to give out Bible tracts on the streets in Glasgow. I don't know if anybody knows Glasgow. Does anyone know Glasgow? Oh, somebody, yep. So there's an area called Blytheswood Square, which is not that nice an area. Um, and that's where Jackie Ross started handing out these Bible tracts because he wanted to help people look to something bigger than themselves, a God who loved them. So because he started in Blytheswood Square, that's why the charity is called Blytheswood Care. Now, since then, the charity has grown and developed into an international aid and development organization working in three continents. So we work in Eastern uh, Europe, Asia, and Africa. But the Shoebox Appeal itself was started in 1993, and the purpose was to give a gift to children living in Romanian orphanages. Does anybody remember footage years and years ago of the Romanian orphanages? Awful, absolutely awful. So children handcuffed to cots and just being left. Um, so the legacy from that was those children were grown up and left with nothing, absolutely no future and no hope. And so as an organization, we wanted to give them something that would bless them and help them look to God. And so that's why the Shoebox Appeal started all those years ago. So the first Shoebox Appeal we had in 1993, 300 shoeboxes were given out to children in the orphanages to let them know that they were special and that they were loved. And since then, the appeal has grown thanks to the kindness of people like yourselves and our shoeboxes are given to everybody, to the young, like his Medin, to the old, and everybody in between, because everybody is in need. So they are now delivered to all parts of Eastern Europe and parts of Asia. And just to let you know, the boxes from the southeast go to Serbia and Romania. If we go on to our next slide. That's brilliant, thank you. So the Shoebox Appeal continues 28 years after it first started because the need for the Shoebox Appeal remains. Now the needs were huge before COVID-19 and now those needs are even greater as is the loneliness and isolation many experience that we seek to help. Now this photo shows one of our partners on the left hand side, this guy's called David and he works for us in Serbia. David is giving a shoebox to a lovely lady called Ratka, and she's 75. Now things are tough for Ratka, and it can be in struggle to even afford food. It's just incredible, isn't it, to think that there are people who cannot afford food. Now she helps to care for an elderly neighbor to make a little extra money. Ratka struggles to keep warm inside her home because she has no heating in the cold winter months. So the hat, the scarf and the gloves that she got in her box were so vital. And it's not just for waiting outside, it's waiting inside her home. Everything that she found in her box was able to be used by her, but also even more than that, it helps her understand more about the love that God has for her. Now Ratka said to David that the calendar with Bible verses was a great encouragement to her because the words remind her that God is with her every day. She said, I may be poor, but with God, I am rich. Which is so true, isn't it? Um, now, if we just go into our next slide, look at that smile. That's gorgeous, isn't it? This little girl is called Mariora, and Mariora lives in Romania. She is the youngest of 10 children. Now, we've all got used to social distancing last year, didn't we? Keeping our distance two meters from each other. But somebody like Mariora, that wasn't possible. She lives with her brothers, sisters, parents, and granny, again, in a one bedroomed room that they use as a bathroom, a bedroom, a kitchen, and a study room. 
It's incredible, isn't it? Now, a gift-wrapped and gift-filled shoebox meant so much to this little girl, and she was so excited. You can see she's so excited to receive that box, full of wonder, and her mum had to pick her up because she was just so excited. Can you imagine what her favourite thing in the box was? Can anyone imagine? Yes, absolutely right, the sweets. <laughs> she couldn't wait to get stuck into the jelly babies that were in her box. <laughs> so if we go on to our next slide, it's our video for this appeal. So let's take a look. We are involved in humanitarian work more than 30 years. With Blythewood Care, in, uh, we are involved more than 20 years. We could speak about a uh, close partnership, and that partnership, it was really a big blessing for us and for many people in Serbia. We uh, receive many, many things and many kind of materials, beginning from uh, clothes, food, hygienic materials, hospital items, beds, even fire car, uh, more than 50 fire cars. One of special project, or I could say precious project, is shoebox packages. It is really the project uh, which was blessing for many, many people of all ages. We are at the very house of uh, Light to Serbia organization where we successfully unloaded and sorted uh, over 5,700 shoebox packages intended for the most poor families uh, throughout uh, Serbia. Today we are starting with the first distribution and plan is to personally visit several families uh, on several addresses uh, in the region uh, of central Serbia. This project, this uh, shoebox, this gift to people, somehow regain their trust in people. So we are conscious that we do not solve problem of uh, poverty, but we solve problem of uh, discouragement uh, in many people. So when a child or whoever receives such gifts, like these um, packages, then they regain their trust in people and they are very glad and happy that somebody from uh, far from uh, Great Britain have love and care to make somebody happy here in Serbia. And that's really, that's why this project is very precious and uh, very special in our partnership with Blyswood Care. We are especially thankful to all involved in Blyswood Care especially this time during pandemia. So what encouragement for us and for uh, people in Serbia, even in this difficult time, Blyswood Care send us shoebox packages this year. And we are very thankful for that. So that just gives you an idea uh, about where the boxes go and what happens to them and the difference that they make. Now that was our partner in Serbia, Pastor Dragosha and his family who helped to distribute the boxes last year in Serbia. And I don't know if you picked up on the quote, but he said, um, the shoebox appeal isn't going to solve the problem of poverty. And that is a massive, massive issue. Um, but it does help with discouragement and it helps people to trust people again. And that's huge, isn't it? That's huge. A lot of these people have been just not treated well and not shown God's love. 
And so to be able to demonstrate something of God's love to these people is absolutely brilliant. Really, really fantastic. So on to our next slide. I'm nearly there. Are you still with me? <laughs> okay, so will you join us this year by uh, donating a shoebox? That would be wonderful. I've got leaflets with me just over on the bench if anyone wants to grab any um, after the service today. Uh, I've also got some flat packed shoeboxes over there um, in case anyone can't get any shoeboxes. People have been saying to us for quite a long time, I can't get shoeboxes. So um, if you need a shoebox, let me know. I've got them as well. All right, on to our last slide. Um, thank you. So I just wanted to finish off with this little illustration. It's from a lovely, lovely book that I'm sure some of you have and you know about. It's called The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse by Charlie Mackesy. He's a Christian uh, writer and illustrator. Um, it's a beautiful book. And I think this helps to say it all really, that even when we feel we can't do much, we can still make a difference in the lives of others. So thank you so much for your time this morning.